Welcome everybody. This is Classic Homesteading Practices and today we are going to be talking about bug control. Now, if you are in the similar situation as I am where the bugs are out and they have decided to make a meal out of your garden, it is time to find a way to deal with it. It's time to take out all the bug traps, whether it be with beer slug traps or soy sauce and oil for earwigs or if you decide to get other bugs that will eat the bad bugs or even going and getting your local pesticide there is many different ways to take care of the bug problem now i will refrain from calling them pest bugs because even though these bugs are eating everything and I am not very happy with them the reason why they are doing this is their job it is what they do bugs cannot help it it is just the food that sustains them and I'm not gonna be you know begrudging of an animal trying to eat something um, even though it really makes me angry <laughs> so Without further ado, let's talk about killing these bugs. So, as the bugs have now broken the treaty, it is time for warfare and annihilation. Personally, I will be talking to you about aphids, slugs, probably some earwigs, and hornworm uh, tomato caterpillars. They are very prominent more in the hotter climates, but I do know that there are a lot of aphids that live up in the north. There are a lot of slugs that live up in the north because it is wet, and even though it is cooler, slugs are very much everywhere. Um, well, actually, I don't know. I wonder if they're in the deserts. I wouldn't think so because they are a mainly watery, slimy insect, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Anyway, let's start off with aphids. Aphids are probably the most prominent of garden bugs that will go ahead and destroy almost all of your plants. And the reason why they do this is because we, as gardeners, have a um, very interesting dilemma. Whenever you re-fertilize or you purchase potting soil or you purchase um, or you, for little boys, they pee on certain plants um, which is actually a very good source of nitrogen. Talk to old gardeners, they'll tell you all about it. You didn't kill it because you peed on it, you killed it because the pee is filled with nitrogen and it burnt it out. But anyway, whenever you overload a plant with nitrogen, it will send out a chemical receptor telling aphids around it to come and take care of it. So the aphids will come over, they will climb the stalks, get on the branches, and they will either eat or open holes on the plant and suck out the juices and the water of the plant to get the excess nitrogen out of it. So, unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of aphids that will get on the plants and because of this, they will kill the plants. Now, it doesn't always happen. Usually weeds can get away with it. Herbs can get away with having a bunch of aphids on them. But again, having holy plants is not really a fun experience, which is why a lot of tomato and pepper people get very upset with aphids, including myself. So the best way that I have found to get rid of aphids has been with earwigs funny enough, because at nighttime they will go around and they will eat them. They are a food source to them, and they are local in the new area that I'm living at. You can also use ladybugs, lacewings, 
and praying mantises of all things as other predator bugs to eat aphids. And as long as they stay in your garden the full season, you should be able to see that uh, the change very drastically. You will no longer have an aphid issue. You will never have a whole problem with your plants again. And you'll just have some fun bugs to look at every once in a while. But for people who do not like bugs, there is an organic pesticide. Um, Because I know a lot of people have been getting on board with uh, organics lately. I will give this to you. Um, I do not disparage against people who use regular pesticides because most pesticides, if you did not know this, um, are driven from other plants. And the reason for that is because a pesticide is a plant-based or sometimes even uh, a animal-based way of getting rid of pests, of getting rid of bugs on the plant or animal. So, for instance, camphor or hot in a pepper is a pesticide. It keeps certain bugs away from it in order to stay alive so it does not get eaten. And we actually use camphor as a pesticide in a lot of uh, regular farming. And uh, I do definitely recommend looking up a pesticide before you use it because it is very unfortunate when you get a chemical that is actually very caustic uh, to people which has not been regulated yet. I have seen people uh, talk about there's a raid-adjacent pesticide that is now being sprayed on our food plants in America, Uh, so be very careful of it. For the life of me, I cannot remember the chemical name of it. I'm very sorry about that. But if you look it up, you will be able to see which... Um, which chemicals are now being sprayed on monoculture farms, which monoculture means a one or a singular crop farm. So a farm that only does potatoes or sows corn, wheat, soy, those are monoculture. And unfortunately, yes, we've, we have legalized... Um, and kept legal some very caustic pesticides. But not all pesticides are caustic. A lot of them are actually just fine for human consumption. Because again, most of them come from plants. So, after giving you that long-winded explanation, neem oil, which comes from the neem tree, is a very good way to keep aphids off your plants. Because as they eat the neem oil um, because you're going to be spraying it on your plants and they eat it it will clog them up basically and they will either leave the site because they no longer are able to eat the plant they found that it hurts them um, or it will kill the aphids so neem oil has become a very popular way to deal with aphids And the mixture that you would do with that is water, neem oil, and soap as an emulsifier because uh, oil and water do not mix. They need an emulsifier, which means that it's something that will keep them together. It will keep the neem oil and the water from uh, separating until it has been sprayed on there and it dries down. And the application for that is usually 7 to 10 days. So, if you have a very large garden, you would get a giant insect um, pumping jar. Usually, they're about two gallons to five gallons large. They have a handle on them and a spraying attachment. Uh, But if you have a small garden like I do, then I just use a spray bottle. Again, the mixing is very easy, though, because it is oil-based. Um, you do need to keep it in a tempered room of 70 to 90 degrees unless you're okay with your neem oil solidifying and you would have to heat it up in order to get it, um, 
to mix properly oh, with the water. So neem oil is a really good one. Again, there are other pesticides that you can go to Walmart for, Fred Meyers. Um, most big box stores will have a person-friendly pesticide, a animal-friendly pesticide that will help you out. Now, for other ways to get rid of aphids uh, would be to do a proper fertilization, which means going uh, a little light-handed or regular-handed on the nitrogen in a fertilizer. A lot of people do not realize how much nitrogen is heavy-handed in a lot of fertilizers. Usually, I like to go for compost, which is a 1-1-1 ratio. Um, if you do anything more like a 6-4-2 or a 3-1-1, um, which you, some people might not know what I'm talking about. So when you're looking at a fertilizer, you have an NPK, uh, which is nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And those three chemicals help grow either the stock, the green leafy bits, which is for nitrogen, um, phosphorus is for the roots, and then potassium is for flower uh, creation or fruit creation. And by uh, making sure that it is evenly dispersed throughout the plant, you make a more healthy plant and a more healthy plant or a happy plant. Now, there are a lot of companies that do boost the nitrogen on fertilizers, um, mainly to make it so your plant will look bigger and bushier very quickly because that's what nitrogen will do. As long as you have the proper water and sunlight with the fertilizer, it will just boost up your plant immediately. And that's fine um, to a point. It's like with manure fertilizers. If it's too hot with nitrogen, it hasn't composted down properly, it will burn the plant or it will stunt the plant. Or you'll just get an asinine amount of <laughs> aphids on there. Um, but that is something to keep in mind when you're looking at fertilizers. If you see that the nitrogen is just way through the roof, do a little bit of research. See if that would work for your plants. Most of the time, you just want something that will be um, around a 111 or a 211. Something where the nitrogen isn't too askew from the phosphorus and potassium in your fertilizer. So after aphids, let's talk a little bit about earwigs, which funny enough, eat aphids. They are usually a very beneficial bug, but after they've eaten all the aphids, they do start eating the plants. And if you have a lot of them overrunning your garden, they start to eat way too many of your plants. They start to eat uh, seedlings that have just popped up and they will destroy them and devastate your garden. Uh, the best way that I've found out to deal with earwigs <laughs> is the most simple thing. It is half and half soy sauce and oil in a shallow pit. And at nighttime when earwigs come out, they will go into that and they will drown themselves uh, because after they get in it, it's too slippery, slippery to get out. And they are looking for that fatty and salty taste. Um, so I don't really have much more other than, again, your regular bug pesticide. But I personally love doing the oil and the soy sauce. It's very effective. I've already caught uh, a lot in the last two days that I've used it because we finally figured out what was eating our plants. We thought it was aphids at first, but it was the earwigs. Next, let's talk about slugs for a second. Best way I have ever found 
to take care of slugs is with beer traps. You take a pickle juice jar lid. You turn it upside down. You get some PBR, um, (laughs) the water of beers, um, or some Budweiser, anything like that. You just pour it in there, and the slugs will go towards it. They will be magnetized towards it, and it will dissolve them. I have seen beer traps range from very large to very small, and they will always catch slugs. If you do not like doing that, there's always the salting method, which is putting salt around your bed um, so it doesn't salt the earth of your garden. And if there are any that come close to it, the salt will dissolve the slug as well. Now, for hornworms. Hornworms are the same as aphids in the sense that you can use neem oil to get rid of them. Though I have also heard from another farm. uh, It is called Roots and Refugees Farm. This is where I learned about this trick. Is at night, you take a black light and you shine it on the damaged parts where you think the hornworms are. And they will glow. They are fluorescent at that time of night so you can literally go around and pick them off each individual plant and might i add these guys are usually very large so it won't be that hard to find them but if you want a cheap easy way to do it and you are not squeamish of picking up bugs go ahead and get a black light and have some fun with your kids or your loved one well, or just yourself, and go pick some tomato homeworms. All right. Let me think if there's any other bugs that I've personally had to deal with or that are very uh, cantankerous, fun word, uh, for the garden. We talked about aphids, slugs, earwigs, and hornworms. I think that'll just cover it for today. I hope this was helpful. I hope you do not get bug damage, but on the offhand that you do, may this help you. This is Classical Homesteading Practices. Goodbye, guys.